In the latest update of Blood Strike, there have been various gameplay changes. While I touched some of them in the previous video, I will cover the rest in this one. Today, we will discuss the improvements, optimizations, and balance changes they have made in detail. Let's break them down and I will give you my honest opinion on each. Let's dive into the skill improvements, essentially highlighting which strikers have been enhanced. Frankly, there haven't been a significant changes to multiple strikers. They have just made the following adjustments. First, we have Emma. Players can now move while receiving the healing from the beetle drones. Healing will resume once the character stops moving. This adjustment allows players to relocate while being healed, enhancing their survivability during critical moments. This change might seem a bit confusing at first, but let me break it down. Previously, when you were knocked down and being healed by a beetle drone, you couldn't move until the healing process was complete. Now, however, you can move around while still receiving the healing. The thing is, the healing will pause while you are moving and only resume once you stop. This tweak is quite helpful because it allows you to reposition yourself while being healed. For instance, if you are knocked down in an exposed area, you can move to a safer spot without interrupting the healing process. This way enemies won't easily spot that you are being revived, giving you a better chance to recover safely. Next one is for Jet. This change is a small adjustment but an important one. They have made the blast radius indicator for Jet's skill more accurate to match its actual effects. This means now when you use Jet's skill or an enemy use Jet's skill, the indicator will now show exactly where the blast will hit, helping you to plan and execute your attacks more effectively or if you are in the receiving end you can dodge those attacks effectively. It's definitely frustrating when the indicator doesn't match the actual effects, leading to unexpected damage. With this adjustment, you can now rely on the indicator to accurately show where the blast will hit, allowing for more precise positioning and safer maneuvers. It's a small change, but one that can make a huge difference in gameplay, especially for players who pay attention to the details. Let's dive into the changes made to the weapons. These adjustments are crucial for improving gameplay and balance. Let's see what they have done. First, we have the P9. Unfortunately, it received some nerfs in this update. Headshot damage reduced from 29 to 28. Torso damage reduced from 21 to 20. Abdominal and limbs damage reduced from 21 to 80. I'm not thrilled about the P90 nerf, to be honest. I think it was fine the way it was before. They have already made adjustments to the hipfire accuracy and reduced its damage range in the past and now this. But I understand why they did it. In hot zone matches, everyone was gravitating towards the P90 because it was so dominant, leaving little room for variety in submachine guns. By nerfing it, they are encouraging players to explore other options which could spice things up a bit. It's a bit of a bummer but I'm hopeful that it will lead to more diverse weapon choices in the game. Next weapon we have is the Origin 12. Origin 12 shotgun received a reduction in the base damage of its Dragon's Breath ammunition. Alright, so it looks like they have made some changes, probably in response to the recent Shatter Island update. Before, shotguns were pretty powerful, but now they are tweaking things to make them a bit more more balanced. For instance, they have nerfed the effectiveness of the Dragon's Breath rounds for the Origin 12 shotgun. This might be to encourage players to use the other shotguns like MP155. What this means is they are trying to level the playing field a bit and make sure that no weapon dominates the game. Personally, I think it's a good move, but I would love to hear what you all think down in the comments. This change might give MP155 users a bit of an advantage over Origin 12 users. See, MP155 is a pump action shotgun, which means it requires a bit more skill and accuracy to use effectively. On the other hand, with the Origin 12, you can just hold the fire button and spray bullets everywhere. Personally, I think I step towards the right direction, but what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Next weapon we have is the AK-47. The AK-47 has received a nerf, specifically to its headshot damage, which has been reduced from 45 to 42. As a fan of AK-47, I'm a bit disappointed by this change. I suspect they made this adjustment to encourage players to explore other assault rifles in Battle Royale. Despite the nerf, I still believe AK-47 will remain a reliable choice. Its versatility and effectiveness at longer distances will make it a standout weapon. Even with the reduced headshot damage, it will likely remain one of the top choices in the game. Next up, we have the M4A1. M4A1 has received a notable addition with an inclusion of barrel attachments. I personally see this as a buff as it suggests that developers are focusing more on improving the M4A1 and encouraging people to use it. Take a look at these attachments and tell me which attachment do you think is the best for M4A1 right now? Do you think it can overpower other assault rifles like the AK-47 or the CAC-6 or this cow? Let me know in the comment section below. We might see more attachments for other weapons as well in the future. Now let's talk about the improvements made for PC players. They have upgraded the visual effects of the user interface with a completely redesigned layout. Previously, the layout features large active and passive skill buttons as well as oversized weapon buttons at the bottom of the screen. Additionally, kill broadcast messages were prominently displayed above the weapons. While visually striking, these elements could be distracting and occupy by 
valuable screen space that might otherwise be used for gameplay. But that's no longer an issue with the new and upgraded layout. Everything appears to be smaller now. Personally, I play on a 2K resolution and I wish the 1080p resolution has the same layout. The biggest change I noticed are the weapons which were previously at the bottom have been moved all the way to the right and the skill buttons appear much smaller. Is it good? Well, for everything it takes some time to get used to it. Sometimes I forget to use the skills because they are not as prominent. Another issue I faced is that when I'm in a shop, I usually switch weapons while buying stuff. For an example, if I want to buy a different weapon for slot 1, I would change it there. However, with this new layout, I can't change weapons while I'm in the shop, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about the new layout. Do you think it's good or downright bad? They have also fixed an issue where the mouse cursor would not reset under certain circumstances. This means that sometimes the mouse cursor would not appear, and sometimes it would appear in an unnecessary way. I usually press the key just below the escape button all the time, so this wouldn't be an issue for me. However, it used to be a problem when I played emulator games. When they say reset, they mean centering the mouse so that you can click on anything you want because you know exactly where the cursor is. They have added missing hotkeys. They haven't specified which keys specifically, but I assume that they have something to do with basic functions like reviving a teammate, buying a loadout or opening or closing the pickup menu. Anyways, it's all good now. They have also optimized the visual effects when holding a button. Previously when holding a button, there wasn't much of a visual effect. But now we can clearly see we are holding a specific button which gives an indication to get ready to release it. This is helpful because without this indicator, it wasn't always clear if you are holding the button or not, especially since you are not using a touch screen. Finally, players can now view the key binds more clearly in settings, controls and then default key binds. Everything is now well organized and very user friendly, allowing you to key bind any function to any key you want. This upgrade is better than the previous version and I'm happy about it. It will likely attract more PC players to the game. And that's it for this video and it covered everything we got in the brand new update in blood strike i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon for more upcoming videos like this i'll see you guys in the next one